Hello, it's Jimmy here at the Rice. Just arrived at a Peugeot partner van here that's broken down. It's been dropped off here on a recovery lorry, so we need to have a look at what's going on. Apparently, it's a fueling issue. Okay, so I've got the bonnet open. Uh, having a look around. Apparently, it's got a fuel leak. But, uh, I don't know, it all looks dry so far. Can't visibly see any fuel on the floor. That is water there. It's raining. Hey, inside. See if it starts up. Yeah, it does. Uh, but yeah, the van did break down, so I take it it's got some sort of running issues. Okay, we can see a misting over here. Looks like it's coming from the fuel rail. Uh, we might have to do a bit of stripping down to get in here. Okay, so I've got the engine off there and. We have tried to tighten up that bolt, but it's not working. If we look closely down there, let me just try and zoom in. Looks like there's a hairline crack on that high pressure pipe, so I'm gonna see if we can get hold of one of those pipes really first. All right, we've got the pipe here from Citroen, Perzo, sorry, 26 pound part number there for the pipe. Probably gonna be a common issue, I'm not sure, is it? Okay, so basically this is what the pipe looks like. It's a piece of hard metal pipe. I think this is the bit here that we've got our brake on, right here. So it comes off the fuel rail and it's gonna go back to the high pressure fuel pump. So it looks like we're gonna have to do some dismantling of these bits and pieces here. So take the air pipe off, let's get that out. Got a couple of bolts on this. Uh, squeeze these, we should get these little breather pipe off there. So we're gonna get the air box out. Uh, looks like we might even have to remove the throttle body and what, whatever that piece is down there. What is that? I'm not sure. This piece anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna remove these two 10 millimeter bolts. We've got a few little um, T25s. Looks like we need to take apart the airbox because it won't come out in one piece. Okay, now we can just take the top half off. Now hopefully this piece is going to come out in one piece. Is it? Yep. Just wiggle it to the to the left. Probably should have taken off this pipe here first as well, really. Turn that back this way. Disconnect that. And out it comes. Okay, so we're gonna have to now take out maybe this piece. Uh, we've got a couple of fuel line hoses here. Another one here. Try to see what's going on with this one. Squeeze that. Don't look like the original clip there, is it? Piece of black plastic in there. Uh, let's see what we got down here. Looks like a couple of eight millimeter bolts. You can get this any more around the back there. Get that piece off, and we should be able to get to the other end of that pipe there. Get that one off first, sir. So it looks like that's coming off now. Just try and tuck that to the side if we can. It's very, um, very rigid. There's not not a lot of movement in that. Which I'm surprised. I thought that was going to be a softer rubber there. We don't want to put too much pressure on that. Uh, we've got a couple of eight millimeter bolts. Under here now, three of them. Let's try to see where that one is. There somewhere. And then onto the last one. And 
out it can, can, it can come let's get over that way got three little balls there same so well thankfully we don't need to remove the throttle body there so a little bit easier I've just got a 17 mil spanner here on this union here we'll just get that open now, like I said before I was doing a bit of wishful thinking thinking if maybe that just uh, has shaken itself loose but I think it's got a crack on it so let's try and get that off now we've got that loose with a finger now we just need to do this side okay so the last side there was a 17 but the other side seems to be a little bit bigger looks like a 19 uh, I suppose I'll probably mention just in case anyone's wondering these flex ratchets they're from the Halfords Advance very cheap basic tools but honestly they do the job just as good as any other get that on there there it is it's loose don't want to drop it right let's see what's going on with this well now I can't see a hairline crack it looked like there was a hairline crack on it let's uh, try and examine it a bit better now I can't visibly see anything wrong with this but you know the amount of PSI that these go through probably is a small crack there that I can't even see it's only visible when you got pressure under it yeah actually trying to get the camera to focus just there it looks like it's some sort of marking right there that's where the where the fluid looked like it's coming from so I've got the replacement I'm gonna get this fitted and hopefully I haven't got this wrong surely it's not the uh, the rail itself but it looks like it looks to me like that was coming from the pipe okay so just temporarily I'm just gonna connect this back up before we mount back in that metal section there just want to see has that sealed or have we got bigger issues going on okay back at the van just use a bit of rag I don't want to get diesel all on the key this should start straight up really because it's I haven't lost any fuel is it gonna stall out no it's done 101,000 miles this van now as you can probably see this van had a snap cam belt and all of this has been off the head it's just recently had work done less than two weeks ago I don't know if that's the cause or if this is just a common failure on this Like it's all fixed. Or have we still got a dribble there? Just gonna see if I can dry up some of the fuel that's there. It may look like we got a puddle that's splashing around there, but we've just dried up a little bit. Yeah, so we've got a little bit of a puddle sitting in the block there and obviously what when you look on camera you can see it's sort of shaking but that's just a vibration of the engine uh yeah it looks like it's all sorted okay so i'm just in the middle of putting this bracket back together there now and i'll get that tightened back in oh, that's come off the end of it let's get that back and we can clip back on the fuel holes back there again definitely should be a metal clip on that I think I've had a lot of people mention to me why don't I use a, a chest mounted camera so I can use both my hands but it is cost of living and all and these gloves are expensive I've managed to do this with one hand and I've only used one glove so it helps with the cost of living I don't have to use two gloves 
Okay, so fitted all that back together now. We're going to need to go back in the van and see what faults we have and get them cleared. We're going to have one for the air mass meter, of course. I had the engine running with that off. Okay, so to do the diagnostic part, I'm going to use this tool again. Uh, I know a lot of people are asking, you know, what vehicles, asking me questions like, will this do work on a Peugeot partner? I don't know until I plug it in and see what it can do. I know it will connect, but obviously what it can and can't do, I don't know. So let's see what we can do on this one. Diagnosis. Uh, I'm going to need to go to Peugeot. So it doesn't look like it's fine that automatically anyway. Okay. It's basically the same system as the, as the launch I'm using. Uh, it's connected by a Bluetooth dongle down there. It's doing an automatic search. 2019 Citroen Berlingo. Sorry, Peugeot Partner. What did I just do? Yes. Let's do a full health report. It's going to take some time. Yes. Okay, we're going to let that run its course. Might take a little bit of time, but it's got a timer there in the corner. Show you how, how long it takes to scan each vehicle. So it has scanned the two that we need. Now you can either stop it by pressing pause. It's scanning something that we need to turn the ignition off for. And now it'll ask us to turn it back on. There you go. So yeah, if we press pause now, after it's finished scanning that last module, it should stop. There you go. So it stopped where I've asked it to stop. So we've got airflow, yeah, because that's what we've uh, done. Oh, particle filter. One expecting that one, fuel pressure, high pressure, fuel rail. Uh, what else have we got? We've got a fair few here. Starting monitor and air inlet temperature. Of course, we've had all of that disconnected. The only one that should not be there is that particle filter. But anyway, we're going to clear cutting out of the internal combustion engine while driving. So it's also got the fault for that because yeah, that's that's what the customer said to me has happened. He's driving along, van cut out, and it did start back up, but he could smell fuel. Recovery driver came out AA and said he's got a, a fuel leak from somewhere down the back of the diesel uh, injection system, and basically that's all they knew. So I came out and you now that's what we, that's where we are. Right, I'm just going to clear all of these faults for now. Okay, clearing is completed. Let's go back into the engine now. I hate when it does this because I don't know which, which one of these codes it is. I'm just going to have to try one by one. Okay, it's not that one. Uh, actually, I think I do remember last time I'd done one of these, it was either this one or the EDC. Okay, looks like we're in. Uh, let's have a look at the data stream now for the DPF to see why did it have a DPF code there. Exhaust line information. Soot in the particle filter. Don't know why we've got different wording for it. Differential pressure. Let's press OK. Now let's start this up and see what's going on here. So it looks like we have zero millibars pressure. Maybe he's got a damaged DPF. Accelerate it up. Well, either that live data is not working or we've got something seriously wrong because. No pressure. It's not reading. Uh, I'm just going to come back here and check one of the other engine modules just, just to be sure. Okay, so this one is giving me something that looks a little bit more familiar than what I'm used to. The Enox system, we've got all of the different systems here. Exhaust line information too, we should have the particle filter stuff, here we go. I think that other module I went into just wasn't compatible with the vehicle. Yeah, there we go, 3-4 millibars of pressure. That seems okay to me. It seems fine, maybe maybe a tad low there, but no, it seems fine. Maybe, maybe it's just a phantom code that's just been set off by... Uh, whatever else errors that, that's been going on with the vehicle. Right, while we're here I'll show you a quick little way around the tool. I'll put the link to this in the video. 
I've got a, an affiliate link that you can buy it from. I don't know how it works yet. I've not had anyone buy one from it, but apparently I'll get a little bit of a cut. I don't know how much it would be, a couple of percent or something. Replacement parts, so you can you can do the replacement for the DPF particle filter NOx system, add blue resets, all of that. You can do the additive tank, which is the Eli's tank. All of those items there, you can do it. Uh, go back, what else have we got? Recodes, we've got actuation tests. Test the fuel, test the emissions control circuit, which is basically, you might have the option here to switch on the, the ad blue pump. That's to check the Eli's tank. Pressurization of the Denox, does it check the pressure of the Denox ad blue system? Check the bleeding of the AdBlue diesel additive pump control test. Urea pipe heating test. Urea injector. So that's the... I think that's the AdBlue injector there. Yep. See, there's a bit of a confusion because they call both of them Urea. Urea tank. Or what they do sometimes call this one now is the diesel additive. Diesel additive pump. And then the Urea would be the AdBlue. So basically, yes, this can do most of the stuff that you are going to want to want from a scan tool that costs, I think this costs roughly around 500 to 600 pound. So yeah, if I click on the link here, we'll get it up and see how much it is on the King Ballin site. So K8, okay. $699 with two years updates. So dollars, that's US dollars, obviously if you're paying in pound sterling it would uh, give you whatever the rate is so of course like I said if you are going to buy one if you buy it from that link that I'm going to put on the video it helps me get a little something out of it okay so that's all of the faults cleared no more warnings on the dash there jobs all finished so that's it all done see you in the next video